Hey all your OS reviews, a few weeks back we did a review on the BMAX B2, which was this mini PC running on Windows 10 Pro Edition for under $200, supports up to 3 monitors, up to 4K resolution, and is good for media consumption and office usage. Well, slightly awkward thing is I think I found actually a model that offers even better value just a few days later. The design of the box is a bit more generic, not quite as sleek looking, uh, but in terms of the value I think it is a better one, and that's because it sells for the same price of around 200 bucks. It has a slightly faster processor instead of the Celeron N3450 that was found on the B2. This is a quad-core chip that's clocked up to 2.2 gigahertz. This one is using a Celeron N4 100, which is slightly faster. It's also quad core, but clocked up to 2.4 gigahertz. This is technically a slightly newer chip. The more important difference is, although it comes with the same amount of RAM, which is 8 gigs of DDR4 RAM, it has more storage. Not only does it come with 128 gigs of built-in SSD, it also comes with another 64 gigs of eMMC. So yes, eMMC is not as fast as SSD, but technically, when you combine the two and in terms of the memory that you have for storing files and documents, it's around 192 gigs compared to the B2, which comes with only the 128 gig SSD. It's missing the 64 gigs of bonus space that uh, this model here seems to supply. It can also support triple displays up to 4K res and has two HDMI ports, has an older VGA style port as well. So if you have older monitors, it retains that function, supports dual band Wi-Fi, this box even has a USB Type-C port. That's something that's missing on the B2 and was one of my critiques in terms of the hardware since I thought, you know, Type-C is really the future, it would be great to have one of those, and here we have one. Other contents include the AC power adapter, which does have a kind of short cable length, but it is what it is. We also have some mounting brackets if you want to install this onto, say, the back of a display, a monitor, a TV, or onto the wall. There is a installation quick user manual also it says intel inside as far as the box is concerned it's made out of this polycarbonate plastic but just like other mini pcs this thing is very compact there's some ventilation ports on the side including access to a running fan which does produce a little bit of noise when it kicks in to help things cool down at the turbo speed mode there's also the vga port two usb 3.0 ports supporting file transfer speeds up to five gigabits per second the usb type c port now this type c port though is only going to support uh uh, peripherals for data transfer, I believe. A LED notification light. Other side features the dedicated power key in addition to a micro SD card slot to expand on the built-in memory. Two more USB 2.0 ports, so we get four USB ports total. Plenty of I.O. for such a small box. And then finally on the back is where we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. We have two more HDMI ports, Ethernet port if you don't want to use built-in Wi-Fi, and the power port. So again, fully stacked in terms of I.O., pretty much using all of the available space uh, that is given to us. And then the front surface here can technically be put down because it doesn't have any ports, so it can stand upright like this if you want to take up even less space on a desk. We can see that the Tanix is also smaller in terms of the height, although the dimensions on the top in terms of the length and the width are pretty similar. So this is more compact and also with more I.O. You can see the difference there. So very impressive in terms of what Tanix have done. Let's take a closer look at the performance next. A cold boot into the OS takes about 20 seconds, so relatively quick. And initially, we are granted to a very clean install of Windows 10 Pro. As aforementioned, Microsoft Office is not built on in, but you get 30 days for free afterwards you do have to pay, which is the same as on the BMAX B2 and other mini PCs these days. Although you can always opt for alternatives if you don't want to use traditional Office, things like OpenOffice, Google Docs are all for free. We can see that, interestingly, the OS is installed on the 64 gigs of uh, eMMC by default, as opposed to the SSD, which is located in the D drive but is entirely blank, and you can fill that up with your own content. But in a way, I almost would have liked it to be the other way around because using the SSD does mean that the overall system performance can be a slightly snappier, but as it is, it's still fairly responsive, uh, but that's something to keep in mind. It's interesting. And then indeed, we have a fully activated and licensed version of Windows ready to go. This is a 64-bit version of the operating system. To begin with, I want to talk briefly on the performance with some benchmark scores. 
Again, this is the Celeron N4100, and the pass mark score hovers around 2,476, which is, of course, not going to be a replacement for something more powerful that has, say, a Core i series or even a Core M series chipset. But at the same time, it's not shabby. It's not too shabby in terms of just regular usage, basic usage. Things like opening up documents and doing some web browsing. It's also a good point to reference a comparison with the aforementioned Intel Celeron N3450, which is found on the other BMAX B2, and you can see that that particular chip scores about 500 points lower on the pass mark score. Of course, benchmarks aren't everything, but this is definitely a pretty significant difference between the two, uh, not to mention that the N3450 is an older architecture that came out in 2016 versus 2018. We do some quick web browsing, things like opening up different uh, websites like The Verge. This is using the full desktop version of the site. Lots of ads which are popping up, but it's still pretty fast to load as you can see here. Um, right now the internet connectivity is also very good. It supports again 2.4G and 5G Wi-Fi. Really didn't have any problems despite the fact that the antenna is embedded. Still offered quite strong reception even though I was a little further away from the router. So in terms of connectivity, no issues there as far as web browsing. The 8GB of DDR4 RAM is more than sufficient for an entry-level machine, just like the BMAX B2. Again, that's one of the strengths, I would say, of this model compared to older mini PCs. Typically, a year or two ago, in fact, if you find a mini PC for $200, it would only come with 4 gigs of built-in RAM. So this will allow you to get more multitasking done. In terms of using Chrome, I was able to juggle easily 8 to 10 tabs, and the browser tabs would be still open when I flipped back and forth between them, and speeds were still relatively good. So increased RAM is always nice to see. In fact, it's the same amount of RAM that you'll even find on more powerful mini PCs usually, which have a Core M chip typically only have 8 gigs of RAM as well, so this is not shabby at all. If we jump into something like video watching, this is going to be on YouTube, and I am loading it up right now at 4K resolution. It's a pretty impressive experience in terms of the fluidity. We can scrub between parts of the video. We get a ton of detail with this uh, Ultra HD resolution and being able to enjoy, again, streaming video content, things like YouTube and Netflix. Certainly it works without any problems if you want to use it for media purposes, for playing back 4K files. Um, and of course, the same goes with local files. If we can stream it back in 4K, we can also play it back uh, through a memory card or something that's stored inside, and it also handles those really without any issues. If you want to do things with PowerPoint, um, as well as things like editing Excel documents, it handles without any issues at all. Productivity tools, which are lighter, you know, is a breeze on this particular machine, and it's perfectly capable for that. If you're giving presentations, if you want to read back files from a thumb drive, as far as more intensive productivity tools, if you're getting into video editing territory and maybe heavier Photoshop, that's when you'll have to take a bit more caution because, again, the processor here is still relatively entry level and it's still using integrated graphics. And also, exporting your edited video will be something that's longer than on something with more powerful internals. It's not really I say design for video editing uh, and also for heavier gaming, things like that. So for example, a 10 minute video clip exported in full HD resolution will take around 15 to 20 minutes to export. Lighter kind of uh, data science work it can also handle. So again, for things like homework, office work, it will uh, do pretty well. And anything that's connected to the cloud, of course, it can uh, be a great application as well. You do have access to the Microsoft Store, so you can find some lighter titles more geared towards mobile platforms, but if you are getting into more complicated or AAA titles, definitely not good enough in terms of the processing power for it to run smoothly. Things like puzzle-based games, uh, mobile titles that you'll find in the store can all work quite well, but anything more complicated will be, of course, more difficult as well. And that kind of summarizes the experience here. It's, it's perfectly adequate for casual usage and a pretty good value at that because of the added RAM. You can actually multitask between several open games and applications without really feeling as much stress as older budget mini PCs used to have. So that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the Tanix mini PC. I want to point out that previously I said that Tanix is not as well known as maybe BMAX, and that's only true to a certain extent. BMAX has more of a reputation in making 
PCs, computers which run on Windows, but Tanix is a brand that we've actually checked out in the past uh, as well, as far back as a couple years ago, in fact. But we saw them in the context of a Android-powered TV boxes, but uh, they're trying to now branch out also onto devices which are running on Windows, and this is one of their first iterations of that. Um, and perhaps that's part of the reason why that they're also pricing it more aggressively compared to their competitors. Again, a great value considering the fact that you get more storage, a faster processor, as well as more I.O. than all of the competition that you'll find for under $200. It's very compact, performance is pretty stable. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the Intel Celeron powered N4100 Tanix Mini PC.